welcome to episode five of Bad Drinks TV. I am H, your host, and in case you don't know by now, we are going through the six essential cocktails according to Embry's Fine Art of Mixing Drinks. And you find it in this wonderful book. It was published in uh, 1948. And please try and get a copy, okay? I really like to get the books, and this is Cocktail Kingdom, okay? They do really good reproductions, all right? Now, we are going through the six, and they are, and in no discernible f order, are the uh, Manhattan, the Martini, the Old Fashioned, the Sidecar, the Jack Rose, and the Daiquiri. So now we're on episode five, and we are talking about the Manhattan. And look at all these lovely babies. So just before we start, because it's my show and I can get away with this, I'm gonna have a, just a nice little glass of whiskey to get my palate into the whole idea of making Manhattans all over again, all right? Uh, I do love Mictors, this is their rye, and we are gonna be talking about mainly rye whiskey. It can be done with bourbon, but we, as we do, covered this a bit more in the old fashioned episode, we're gonna go on to more of the rye. okay? So what do I love about the Manhattan? Well, mainly because it's whiskey, which you can never really go wrong with whiskey. I love whiskey, all right? And also introducing the idea of vermouths. Now, this was a really big thing around the 1860s and the 1870s when this all started coming onto the market. Uh, and because before that, you already had whiskey and you already had bitters, and then vermouth came in. And this is where the Manhattan really comes into its own. And this really is an essential drink. All right, you really got to learn how to make this. But there are three different ways in which it is made. In terms of you have what's called a dry version, which is with dry vermouth. And then we go with a perfect Manhattan, which is these two, and then a sweet Manhattan, which is with what's called a Rosso vermouth. Now, if you read older cocktail books, like where the Manhattan is started being mentioned, and there's two versions here. Um, we have the modern bartender, and we also have the flowing bowl. Uh, these are all published around the 19th century. And they, when you read these books, you're gonna see expressions of uh, something called Italian vermouth or French vermouth. Now, Italian generally meant the red, the rosso, and the French meant the dry. However, in the 21st century, shit tons of people make vermouth now. Okay, you can get it almost in every country in the Western Hemisphere and also in places like Australia and New Zealand and even South Africa, okay? Now, it's up to you. I would personally go to a bar and try a glass of their vermouths and see which ones you like. If you like them, go and buy a bottle and then start playing with it in your Manhattan. Now, the key thing for me when it comes to uh, choosing my vermouths it's very simple. It must be able to stand alone, as in, can I drink it completely on its own? Okay, let's just have a little bit of whiskey to start with. Mm. Mm. And this is another point. This is just a little selection of uh, rye that I like to use. So I've got some Canadian and I've got American, okay? So I like to taste my, uh, my whiskey first have a look at what I'm going to like in the flavors, then have, to have an idea of my vermouths as well. And then, of course, we've got the bitters. And this is where it goes completely crazy. All right, so here we go. Bitters, basic 101, Angostura and orange. But with the Manhattan, there are a lot of history books that say, well, you can use this one, it's uh, Stoughton's Bitters. It's a very old one. This is a reproduction by the San Francisco Company. And then, of course, this. Um, this is Abbott's Bottles. This is Abbott's Bitters. This is an original. Um, it was given to me for a birthday present. I was very, very lucky. And it's outstanding. And it's considered one of the ingredients that was in an original Manhattan. There's a, a reproduction by these guys here. This is rather good as well, if you can get a bottle. What I do here for my bar, um, I combine uh, a company called Bob's Bitters, Abbott's, with Angostura. And I use 50-50 of each to make this. There's actually a little uh, TikTok video on how to make this. It's very, very easy. And of course, orange bitters as well. But what I do is I also blend two different types of orange bitters as well. I do uh, a scrappy Seville orange and apothecary barrel aged orange bitters which is in this lovely little light bulb. Okay, yes, I have lost a little toys. 
and then garnish as well. So, for uh, the dry Manhattan, it's usually uh, a lemon peel. For the perfect Manhattan, uh, orange or a lemon. And then for the sweet Manhattan, cherries. Now, cocktail cherries. For the love of God, please buy nice cherries. It's really, really important, okay? If they've got that sort of glow-in-the-dark color, yeah, don't go near them. I like these guys, uh, mainly because these are the kind of cherries you put on ice cream. You can't go wrong, all right? They're lovely, lovely syrup as well, okay? I also know a few bartenders like a couple of bar spoons of this in Manhattan, okay? So we're gonna do three different types of Manhattan, and I'm gonna show you sort of two ways to make it, but please don't, please don't shake it, okay? I know you'll hear some, look at some of the older recipes and they ask if it to be shaken. Very different time back then, all right? If you shake a drink, I know people say you're bruising alcohol. You can't fucking bruise alcohol. What's happening is, is that you're, you're smashing water into the, the liquor and the mix and you're doing this sort of forced over dilution, all right? You don't want to do that. All right, so here we go. I'm gonna show you some equipment that you're gonna need for your Manhattan, for equipment to make your Manhattan with. It's relatively simple, but please get some stuff. So, a stirring tin or a, a mixing tin as well, a glass. Peeler, spoon, tweezers are gonna be rather useful. And of course, jiggers, please use them again. Now, glassware. Um, I'm gonna show you one drink how to do, uh, I do a Manhattan on the rocks if somebody asks for it. But also, uh, I got some vintage coupes. Now, I saved up for these. These are about 60 bucks each, but they're beautiful, okay? Um, you can go a little cheaper if you want. Um, I have some nice, good standard ones here. These are only about $16, okay? It's up to you on how far you want to go. I'm obsessive compulsive, so I, I just love beautiful glassware. All right? Can't resist it. And please try and use some of this equipment, okay? You'll, you'll start making some really lovely drinks. Now, uh, chinning your glassware. Now, I have uh, using the ice. Now, right, this is where I want you to be a bit careful. I see this a lot in bars, and it scares the living sh out of me because people want to chill the glassware. Okay, I'm gonna be a little careful here. They're putting in whole chunks, okay? Um, and doing things like that. I see why, with a bit of water, cool, but you putting chunks into your glass, especially if it's, if it's quite fragile, you're gonna start chipping it, okay? And that can cause some damage, all right? So please try not to do that. What I like to do, it depends on where you wanna go. Now, you can either get, uh, a cloth bag or a pillowcase, preferably please clean the pillowcase, right? Wise idea before you do this. And then I have this. Okay, this is a, a little extreme because this was handmade for me. Um, but get a nice little hammer, get some ice, put it in a bag and just beat the out of it, okay? Uh, my view is when you are using a little bit of violence, just think about somebody you really fucking hate. That's what I usually do. It's usually some customer pisses me off on the day. And then you just hammer the crap out of it and get uh, some crushed ice and pour it in. Or I have a lovely little machine. And what I do is, if I have to, get some nice shaved ice, okay? and just put it in like that, okay? And that will start to chill your glass, all right? Because it's rather important when it comes to things like a Manhattan, all right, is that you have a nice chill glassware. Or, if you're even more crazier than I am, good luck, you get something which is called a, uh, a glass chiller, okay? This is what I have, I call it Carrot Top, obviously, because of the color. It's great fun, um, I use it because it means that I don't have to keep my glass in the fridge anymore. Personally, what I would do, keep some glassware in the fridge, okay? Keep it in the, in the fridge, gets it really nice and cool for you, and it makes your life so much easier, okay? I'll show you how this little machine works though, because it's really good fun, I love it, all right? 
So here we go. All right, this is carrot top, and here's what I do. So, get my glass. Unfortunately, this is almost $1,100 Canadian, and you just connect it up to uh, a CO2 cylinder. And then what I do, do this. Okay, right, but that's fun there now. Okay, that's for equipment. Depends on how far you want to go and how much money you, you want to spend. But please have a bit of fun and really enjoy. So now we're going to start making some drinks. So here we are, we're going to start making some Manhattans. Now, first off, we're going to do is the dry Manhattan, and we're also going to talk about the stories that go with the Manhattan. And there is a lot of drunk history, obviously, and unfortunately, it does involve a lot of rich white people and one bartender. So we're going to do the first story. Uh, just a little mention on the book. This is rather a good book to read, okay? All right, please try and get a hold of this. Either download it or buy it, okay? I, I love books. So really good one, please, okay? So we're going to go and do a dry Manhattan, and we're going to do this with uh, uh, basically one of my staples from my bar that I use, which is a Canadian rye called Lot 40. Um, it's a great uh, rye whiskey to use. They're uh, doing a rather good job at the moment and I'm rather enjoying what they do and it's a great price point. So for me, it's a two ounce measure of the rye whiskey, okay? Pour it in. Then, ounce of dry vermouth. Now with this one, I would rather like to do a mixture of both Angostura and orange, so one dash of each, which is not a problem and I like the idea of doing it. So, one dash, one dash. Then add lots of ice. Please get some good ice. Do not use crushed or shaved ice to make this drink. For the love of God, please don't. Okay, all right. Got it there, and then stir, okay? Uh, I have done a video on showing you how to stir drinks, but there we go. So the history goes that supposedly a uh, Colonel Walker, okay, uh, who was basically owned a bar in New Orleans, and as white people do, rich white people do, they go yachting. Seems to be a common theme, and Story goes that all he had in his cooler was uh, some American whiskey and uh, vermouth. Now, I call bull out on this one because I've been on a yacht, and I'm talking like a normal yacht, you know, 150 to 200 footer, and I'm telling you right now, no rich white person would have just whiskey and vermouth in their cooler. They would have champagne, they would have gin, they'd have loads of stuff. But the story goes that's all he had, and he put the drink together and supposedly created the Manhattan. Now, I'm not really convinced of this one, okay? But now keep stirring, and there we go. Get your nice little chilled glass, which I'll do with my little machine again. Drain in. Do a lemon peel because it's a dry. And there we go. I'm gonna have a little taste. Oh, it smells good. Mmm. That's actually rather nice. Oh yeah. That's a goodie. Okay, so that is a dry version of a Manhattan. Next up, probably the best story I have uh, that I know for the, the where the Manhattan came from. And it's basically by uh, a guy called William Mulhall. And he's saying that around the 1860s, 
And Mole Hall was uh, the bar manager and head bartender at a place called Hoffman House, uh, so famous bar in 19th century in New York. But he was saying in an interview that around the 1860s and 1870s that there was a bartender down the road near his bar called Black who basically created the Manhattan. And one of the stories I have that goes with this one is that it was actually just built in the glass. This also coincides with the fact that I have two or three regulars that come into my bar and they love a perfect Manhattan on the rocks. And these guys will sit here for six hours and will go through 10 or 11 of these drinks. Like they'll pound it. That's a, a full bottle of booze there. So here's how I do it. I don't do a mixing glass if I'm gonna do a Manhattan in a glass. I prefer to just simply build it in a glass. So get a nice rox glass. I, um, got, these are called uh, Nachmans, I believe. Uh, they're, they're beautiful. They're only between 20 and 40 bucks a, a, a glass and they are rather nice, okay? So here we go. What we're gonna do with this one for a perfect one, we're gonna use an American uh, rye whiskey. Uh, whiskey. American rye whiskeys have to be 51% corn. Uh, this is a bottled in bond. So one of the uh, oldest consumer acts uh, Basically, they have to keep this in a federally controlled warehouse for about four years and it has to be 100% uh, alcohol, okay? So it has to be 100 proof, all right? Um, Rittenhouse is wonderful. They're, they're, it's a great American rye whiskey and I do like to use it. So here we go, perfect one, just building in the glass. I add about two ounces, again. Okay. And as it's perfect, you do half an ounce of dry vermouth. I like Cinzano. Uh, this is my, uh, my kind of workhorse vermouth I have at work. Half an ounce of this. And then my blended whiskies that I do, which is a, a mix of both Abbott's Bitters and Angostura Bitters, all right, which is in this wonderful little thing. And I just do one big dash, and then I add some ice, okay? There you go, okay? And then just stir it. So just build it in the glass. You're always gonna get some ice going everywhere, but here we go, and there it is. Get some tongs, they're rather useful. Okay. And go like so, keep stirring. Don't have to stir for too long because dilution with the drink, as you're drinking it, will dilute even more, okay? And then I like to do a nice orange twist with this. So as I say again, this is one of the best stories I have, is really a bartender made this drink down the road, so, sort of the one I'm gonna go by. Put in, and boom, and there you go. And that is a nice little perfect Manhattan on the rocks. Obviously you can do this straight up, so stir it in a mixing glass, put it into your chilled martini. Okay, here we go. Mmm, it's rather good. And then what happens is, don't stir too much, because as you're drinking it and holding it, you're gonna dilute it more, okay? But that's a lovely little mix. Um, I have customers that just drink <laughs> of this, okay? But this is great. This is actually pretty close to what the original one was, okay? And you can use bourbon. I just like to use rye, okay? And there we go. So that's the perfect. So now we're gonna go on to a, a sweet Manhattan, or really the standard Manhattan that most of you will ever get if you ever go into a bar. And this is how I like to make mine, especially if I'm at home. So we're going to do a bit, a bit special on this one. So. I got a rather a nice um, mixing tin here, a mixing glass, which would be one to call it, metal. Now, a little notes on vermouth. Uh, for this one, I'm going to use something called an Antica formula. Um, this is an epic vermouth, it is really rather nice, okay? And this is one of the best examples of a Rosso vermouth that you can just easily just sip on its own, 
okay? But if you do get it, please, for the love of God, put it in the fridge as soon as you open the bottle, okay? I mean it, oh, God damn it, please. Um, I have little uh, tools that I use. Um, this is a, uh, a vacuum pump to suck out the air. This is actually electronic because basically I buy them, put two small AAA batteries in it and seal it up and then we'll do that in a minute. I can't stress this enough. And you have to drink it within almost two weeks, okay? But Antica, oh, f it. F it. You can just drink this on its own, okay? Uh, now, another thing as well though. Okay, so this kind of vermouth here, uh, Dolin's, they're quite light, so that works well with, with a lot of uh, liquor. Um, this one I use for a bit more of a high-end one. It's by Gonzalez. Use it with, I used, like to use it with things like the Lot 40 and even the Rittenhouse because it holds up to its own. Now, if I'm gonna use Antica though, which is very rich, very powerful, very strong vermouth. I like to use a bit more of a ballsy, heavy uh, rye whiskey. And for this one, I'm gonna use this. Now, this is rather special. This is uh, a lot 40 cast strength. Um, they are gonna re-release another lot, so keep a lookout for it, because they've done a fantastic job with it. This is absolutely stunning, wonderful uh, straight rye whiskey. Okay, uh, I've gotta hand it to him, well done Canada. But it's ballsy. All right, it is 50% alcohol. All right, so these two mixed together are gonna to be wonderful because they are gonna balance with each other, all right? So remember, if you're using a heavier vermouth, use a stronger, more ballsy whiskey, okay? And then what we're also gonna do is, because it's my show and I can do this, we're gonna use a good Abbott's Bitters. Or if you can't, get one of these. This is, could cost you a couple of hundred bucks at auction. This is about 30, 40 bucks. You know, go for this one. All right. So here we go. We're going to make something that I'm going to thoroughly enjoy. And then we're going to talk about one of the most famous stories of the Manhattan. And it involves somebody called Winston Churchill. If you haven't heard of him, he was the guy that basically helped us win World War II. Now, the story goes that at the Manhattan Club in uh, New York, and this was all around around 1874, I believe. Um, this drink was created at this club for a Jenny Jerome. Now, Jenny Jerome is an amazing lady. She is the mother of Winston Churchill. Now, story is that uh, this club, the Manhattan Club, which is full of rich old white people, like literally rich old white people doing rich old white people things, which is, you know, just having lots of parties and soirees and getting drunk and deciding how the rest of the world is going to be run. No change there then. And what they did was they created this drink at the Manhattan Club for Jenny Jerome to do this big soiree to help re-elect another rich old white person into government power. Shocking, nothing's changed again. So the problem is, Jenny Jerome really is an amazing lady, and I mean, she, she really was absolutely phenomenal. But during that time, and on that particular week, she was sort of giving birth to Winston Churchill at Blenheim Palace in Oxfordshire. So how the f does somebody, even Jenny Jerome, could be in two places at once? So giving birth to Winston Churchill and having a drink at the Manhattan Club. No just didn't happen. It's a great story and it's a wonderful story, but it really is a story and a classic example of drunk history. All right? So here we go. We're gonna make a lovely Manhattan right now and I can't wait because this is gonna be a wonderful experience. Uh, so here we go. We're gonna make a really rather a nice Manhattan. A little side note, and this is epic. At the uh, Blenheim Palace, which is where Winston Churchill was, um, you know, being born, basically. Yes, believe it or not, this is how weird and f up rich white people are. They had a solid gold toilet. Yes, a solid gold toilet. And recently, it got stolen. <laughs> you have a solid gold toilet, you deserve to have it f***ing stolen. Right, but it is rather a nice palace, actually. I've been there. It was near my boarding school, actually. Yes, I'm a posh kid. So, here we go. We're gonna add this cast strength lot 40. Good, I'm actually gonna do two and a half ounces with this one because I really want 
to have that lovely flavor coming through it, okay? All right, and now here it is. So this is our wonderful little vermouth. We are gonna have to open this because it's a bit of a fiddle. The Italians are very well known for making it hard to open up their bottles, but fair enough, okay. So let's just go and get that in there if I can. There we go, all right. This is wonderful stuff. So, put it in, one ounce. There we go. So, as soon as I do this, I'm gonna try and fit this on and hopefully this will work. There we go, we'll leave it. Okay. Now, if you do get a bottle of something really expensive like this to use, uh, there's a really great little bar spoon if you can try and find it, and hopefully they're still gonna make one. This is called a, uh, it's called the serpent's tongue or serpent fork tongue. I call this the cocaine spoon. Tiny little spoon, yeah. If you've ever done cocaine in your past, you'll probably understand what I'm talking about right now. This is what I call it. So this is almost a two milliliter or 2.5 milliliter measure. So we're gonna make this, oh. Oh my God, the flavors are wonderful. And I've got to give credit to Abbott's Bitters. Bob's has done a pretty close facsimile to this one. This company is actually very good and it does make a rather a nice Manhattan, but I've got to hand it this, oh my God, absolutely wonderful. So we're just going to do a little cocaine measure. Yes, I'm probably going to get banned from TikTok again. Yeah, I got banned from TikTok for 12 hours. I'm back on again though. All right, so there we go. We got a good two, and a, two to two and a half ounces of cast strength whiskey. We got a one ounce measure of a wonderful, wonderful uh, vermouth, okay. And we got our little bar spoon or cooking measure, whichever you want to say, of original Abbott's bitters. And then what we're gonna do, add a whole load of ice to this one, all right. Now we're gonna super chill my glass. And there we go. Okay. And then we stir. All right. So there you go, pick whatever story you wanna pick from. I'm gonna go with the bartender. I'm not gonna go with the rich old white people. Um, but it's a wonderful drink. It's a really good example of the perfect marriage or harmony of whiskey and vermouth. I prefer sweet Manhattan, and then you're most likely gonna get one. And if you are gonna order one, you're most likely gonna get it straight up in a cocktail glass or a martini glass or a vintage coupe glass, okay? Now, when it comes to uh, an overproof or a higher proof level of alcohol, stir just a little bit longer than you normally do because you want to get that dilution just a bit more down, okay? So, keep going. All right, now, this is where the tweezers become very, very useful. Here. Cherry. Now, this is rather cool. Do that. Just drop your cherry in, okay? Get your strainer, julep strainer or hawthorn strainer, it's all right. Pour it in. And that is basically a Manhattan or a sweet Manhattan. I'm about to go enjoy something rather nice. Oh, baby. oh me. Oh my God, that is so good. Woohoo!